Hello everyone, I'm Serena and today I'm here with me, Yuri, to talk to you guys about exploring your career choices. So first of all, I'm going to define what a career goal is. So a career goal helps you focus on what you want to do for your living. It can be a specific job that you want to pursue, such as a doctor or a teacher, or a career goal can be a particular field that you wish to work in such as medicine or education. Additionally, a career goal will also guide you into doing what you want to do with your life, rather than just drifting into a job. Generally, a career goal is based on your skills and interest, career possibilities and job trends. So to start off, how many times have you been asked the question, what do you want to be when you grow up? What has been your response? If you're like most teenagers, you may have little idea of how to answer that question. Deciding on a career path is a difficult process, which takes a lot of time and consideration. Chances are that you will make several career changes throughout your life. This presentation will help you learn more about the process of career exploration. So I'll be elaborating on personality and career. So what is your personality? Your personality is who you are and what makes you unique from other individuals. When it comes to career exploration specifically, it's really important to search for a career that fits well with your personality. For example, artistic people are more likely to be successful and satisfied if they choose to work in an artistic environment with other artistic people. So how do you decide what career you want to be in? In order to better understand your desired career path, you should get involved in your school and extracurricular activities, explore a number of careers and majors, get advice from people in your target occupation, follow your passion, and dare to try something new. However, there are also certain things that you shouldn't do. For example, you should not focus on a major just to get a career out of it, select a major just because it is cool or because it seems to promise prestige. You should also not let someone else to push you into a job. Lastly, you should not assume that you have everything figured, it out, figured out because most likely you do not. So here I'm presenting six main areas of interest based on Holland's hexagonal model of career paths. So first we see realistic individuals. These individuals are skilled at working with tools, machines, electronics, or plants and animals. They really value things that they can see, touch, and use. They also view themselves as practical, mechanical, and realistic. Then, we see investigative individuals. They love to tackle new problems. They're curious, inquisitive, and scientific. However, they generally avoid instructing or persuading people. They're also good at math and science problems. Then the artistic individuals. They love to express themselves creatively through art, but they generally avoid highly structured or repetitive activities and they have some great artistic abilities instead. They see themselves as expressive, independent, and original. The fourth type is we see is social. They really like to help people. They're good at teaching, counseling, or nursing. They value helping people and solving social problems. And finally, they view themselves as helpful, friendly, and loyal. The fifth type is enterprising. They have strong leadership skills, enjoy leading and persuading people. They value success in politics and leadership, and they view themselves as sociable and ambitious. Finally, we see conventional individuals who really like to work with numbers or records. However, they avoid unstructured activities. They value success in business and view themselves as organized and dependable. Now, We'll be moving on to share some of our personal experiences with our career paths. So Mayuri, what career paths have interested you and why? 
So I'm currently a sophomore at Rice University, pursuing a major in neuroscience on the pre-med track. I am interested in pursuing the field of neurosurgery. This field constitutes cutting into the brain in order to help solve certain problems with the brain, such as to remove brain cancers or to remove blood clots. My interest in this field arose from a general interest in neuroscience in high school. In high school, I read neuroscience related books. I also shadowed a neurosurgeon, due to which I was amazed by the incredibly intricate, complex and fascinating field of neuroscience when I saw neurosurgical procedures for the first time. I think the brain amazes me just because there is so little that we know about it and there is so much to learn. And being able to maximize my knowledge in this very interesting field to help patients would be the ideal job for me. I'm studying psychology also as a sophomore currently um, on the pre-medical track. I'm interested in becoming a psychiatrist because I want to listen to patients who have mental health challenges and talk with me to come up with the best and most personalized and useful management plans so that we can improve their outlook or attitude toward their, towards their life so that they can pursue a happier lifestyle. We all face issues such as burnout from time to time. Some of us have faced traumatic events that are difficult to recover from by ourselves, while some people face even less problems such as substance abuse and addiction. It can be really difficult to face these challenges on your own and without professional help. A lot of people can feel stuck and helpless when they are facing mental distress and when they lack professional guidance. The psychiatrists use psychological interventions or therapy. They can prescribe medication and use other treatments such as those that involve passing a small electrical current through the brain under anesthesia to help their patients recover. So Mayuri, how do you think you could acquire the skills or experiences necessary to get your dream job? Well, so in order to become a neurosurgeon, I would first have to look at the necessary requirements. First, I have to have a high school diploma. Next, I must have a college degree from a four-year accredited U.S. university. Following this, I must obtain my doctor of medicine or my MD degree and then train in the specialty of neurosurgery for seven years in a training program called a residency. Finally, I can begin my career as a neurosurgeon. If there are no breaks between these years of training, I will be 33 by the time I achieve my goal. Currently, I am on the path to achieving a bachelor's diploma in neuroscience, so I have around 13 years of training left. That's super interesting. Do you currently have any mentors who may have experience in such fields or who could point you to someone else that does? Well, so because this field is very specialized, I first want to look for mentors in the next step in my overall goal. So the next step is after obtaining my bachelor's degree, I want to get into medical school and obtain my MD degree. Um, Rice University has excellent pre-med counselors and there are also many online resources that can provide helpful tips on how to get into medical school. I would want to use these resources to first get into medical school before looking for an expert in the field of neurosurgery. What kinds of things do you do to prepare yourself for your career, Serena? So as I've mentioned, I would love to go into psychiatry. So I am currently studying psychology, which is super re relevant to that career path. Um, and with this, I study how the mind works because this really fascinates me and I love to learn the ways that we perceive the world around us and how this happens. I'm particularly interested in clinical and social psychology, so I take classes at Rice that fit these interests. This provides me with a relevant foundation for the field that I want to pursue in medical school, which as I mentioned is psychiatry. I also have to take some prerequisite classes that are required for admission into medical school. And these classes um, include such natural sciences such as biochemistry, physics, and organic chemistry. But also, I need to take classes across all disciplines such as in the humanities 
and social sciences to ensure that I have a diverse academic background to better prepare me for medical school. And to see what working as a physician really encompasses in the real world, I try to get real life experiences in clinics or hospitals where I serve as a volunteer or as a student who shadows the primary physician. Here, I learn how to better interact with my patients by having to work directly with them or by watching other healthcare professionals interact with them. It's really a lot of watching and learning. So Miyuri, I know a lot of people pick their profession based on their personal values. What is really most important to you as far as a career? Is it money, um, fame, or a sense of purpose? Well, so I know that I'm definitely not doing this for fame. I don't really have an interest in being famous, nor do I care. And I genuinely think that it is unhealthy to care about fame. I would say that a sense of purpose is probably my biggest factor in my career choice, most likely followed by money. Medicine is a field that I believe fits me well. I would like to view myself as studious and disciplined, which are two very important aspects of becoming a doctor. I also like medicine because I get to explore many different fields while still being able to follow my passion. For, uh, for example, I've already taken two philosophy classes so far at Rice. I think that neurosurgery would give me a sense of purpose because the brain has interested me for a very long time and being able to surgically help patients and my field of interest would be very fulfilling for me. How about you, Serena? So for me, primarily, it's really the sense of purpose and social worth that drives me to pursue a career like psychiatry. Um, I really want to feel that I'm able to contribute something to the people around me and to my overall society. I think knowing that I'm involved in the process of helping others recover from their challenges brings me a lot of satisfaction. It's also the sense of achievement that follows the whole you know, medical process from working with a patient from the time that they begin treatment and all the way to the end. I believe that a physician and patient can also build a really meaningful and often lasting relationship, especially in a field such as psychiatry where openness and conversation are key. Establishing this is something that I really look forward to doing as part of my career. So once you're choosing your career path, it's really important to know what your job specifically entails. So you should consider the challenges. Are there daily or long-term difficulties? And are there cases when your job doesn't match up to what you, your expectations were? Remember to consider your career choice from many different angles and try to get as many perspectives on it as you can before you settle. Some of these things can be looking at income or geographical requirements. For instance, some jobs may require you to travel and think about whether you'd be willing to do that. Think about the stress level that comes with your job and the level of interaction with other people and also who you may have to interact with. Is your job primarily indoors or outdoors? How much independence does this job give for you? What about the balance between creativity and the conventionality of the tasks that you may have to perform? And also perhaps you should consider the physical requirements that come with your job. So Mayuri, this brings me to ask you one question. Um, so one important fact about neurosurgery is that the training can be really long. Actually, the longest is any medical speciality and the hours can be so brutal. Also, if you're planning to have children and a family in the future, there's a risk of your family priorities holding you back in finishing your neurosurgical training. More than that, you will most likely have to pay off student debt from your undergraduate university and your medical school tuition, and you'll be on a low salary for quite a period of time. Yes, I agree with you. Unfortunately, that is all very important information to consider in my career of choice. This is why, although I was very confident in neurosurgery as my field of choice when I entered Rice University, I am now somewhat less confident in this field as my definite path. I realized that family priorities can get in the way and therefore I realized that I may have to account for that. 
I always know that although neurosurgery is my intended direction, things could therefore change. And if they do change naturally, for example, if I choose to have a family and therefore not take such a high stress job, then it would be for the better. Who knows, when I get into medical school, I may end up disliking neurosurgery and I may end up in cardiology, which is treating diseases of the heart. Therefore, although I have a general long-term interest, I am going to enter medical school with an open heart and an open mind to all possibilities. When I shadowed a neurosurgeon, I could survive the work hours, but I only shadowed for a week. I'm not sure whether I could handle the same hours of standing and focus for a career for a lifetime. Still, this field fascinates me more than any other field, and therefore my interest lies there the most. Your open mind is super admirable. Um, so in my case, sometimes there can be uh, difficulties in accurately and efficiently diagnosing a patient because as we know, everyone is so different and each patient is a brand new case that has to be considered in a unique way. With this, it can be challenging to decide what treatment works best for the patient. And sometimes, and unfortunately, there may not even be a treatment for what the condition that they are suffering from is. Treatments are still developing with research, and so there may not be the perfect treatment for each patient out there yet, and further research is necessary. I think that this complication could definitely be a source of frustration for both me and the patient. So take a moment to reflect. Think about where your interests lie. Have you ever taken classes at your school that you found particularly interesting or applicable to you? Also, take a moment to assess your personality and perhaps see where you fit in in the whole and hexagonal model of career path. Additionally, as you can see on this screen, I've linked a website to the Occupational Outlook Handbook where you can research several careers without just focusing on one. It may also be useful, as Mayuri said, to reach out to school and career counselors to get more perspectives and also to scope out internet resources. In addition, build your network. Many people love to talk about their jobs and can give you very helpful information to direct you to the perfect career path. So thank you for listening. If you have any career related questions, feel free to reach out to us at reach out to Serena at sjk5 at rice.edu and you can reach out to me at mhg1 at rice.edu. Thank you again for watching.